the life cycle of plants really becomes an important part to understand when we're looking at genetics and the way things grow. In the life cycle of plants, we need to be able to differentiate what we call the sporophyte versus the gametophyte. If you look at the words, phyte refers to plant, gameto refers to plant which produces gametes, sporo refers to the plant which produces the vegetative cells or the spores on this. So here we've, we're going to have a very interesting look at the major types of plants. Sporophyte is the part of the plant that reproduces from spores or vegetatively. When we look at the sporophyte, we're talking about something that's diploid. And since it is diploid in nature, it tends to be the dominant part. We're going to look at these quite differently. This shows you a sporophyte of a plant. You're going, wait a second, that's a tree. Yes, that is a tree. But if we're looking at the sporophyte gametophyte part, that's a sporophyte. We've got this. You're saying that's leaves. Yes, but it's also the sporophyte. It's the vegetative part. It's not the reproductive part of the plant. That's a sporophyte. And you say, well, that's a plant. Yes, that's the plant. And when we're dealing with higher plants, the sporophyte is actually the plant itself. If we look at the gametophyte, is the gametophyte is that part of the plant that produces gametes. Therefore, the gametes are haploid. The gametophyte could be male. It could be female. It could be combined. All right, now let's take a look at some gametophytes. Wait a second, that looks like pine cones that are starting to put out pollen. Yes, you see these in the beginning of the year because they turn your car yellow during the springtime from all the pollen. They're producing the male gametes, which are the pollen. These are the female gametes. These are the pine cones. These are little itty bitty baby pine cones before the pine cones ever get fertilized and start growing. This is a gametophyte. You say, wait a second, that's a flower. Yes, that is a flower of the passion fruit. And it has got the male parts in it, and it's got the female parts in it. And you've already seen that in the flower part. But yes, this is a gametophyte. It is the part that produces the gametes. So when we look at these, and we're going to look at these in several different groups of plants, we're going to see differences in what we get. Now, when we look at plants, and when you get into the part on plants, one of the first things we do is we teach you the difference between the four major groups of plants, which include the non-vascular, the seedless vascular, the gymnosperms, and the angiosperms. So we've got to look at each one of these little parts and see what we're actually getting out of that particular part. We're going to start out with the non-vascular plants. These are plants that live in moist environments and we normally see them as moss. And that is what moss looks like. It is the gametophyte. It is actually haploid in nature. That's what we see. The gametophyte eventually goes and produces this part which raises up quite a bit above the remainder. This part is actually diploid. So this part is the sporophyte. And this is actually produced on the plant. And if you are lucky, you will see this. This we don't necessarily pay attention to. Sporophyte, you can see this division. Out of the sporophyte, that is the upper part of the sporophyte. We call it a sporangium. In the sporangium, you get all these tiny little spores. These tiny little spores germinate to form a little plant-like structure. The little plant-like structure starts to germinate, produce other material on the inside. It forms a little, almost too small to see little plant that produces the gametes. That germinates and produces the moss as we see it. We have a difference between the gametophyte and the sporophyte. Question here is, which one lasts longer? You've all seen the gametophyte, but if you don't know what you're looking for, you don't see the sporophyte. So actually, it spends most of its life cycle on the gametophyte. If we look at seedless vascular plants, and these are things like ferns, what we see is that part of the fern that we always see, and that's the diploid part. That is the sporophyte. If you look at the back of the leaf, you see these little things. We call them sori. Inside of those, you have these sporangia, and the sporangia produce little spores. If you were to take one of these leaves and cut it open, it would look like that, and the little things on the inside are the spores, and the spores get released off. When the spores get released, they germinate into these tiny little plants that are almost invisible. The tiny little plant releases sperm cells or egg cells 
and it starts to grow and it turns into that you get fertilization of the egg cell by the sperm cell and that starts to grow up and increase in size and you can see fertilized egg cells here and when that happens you get a plant that looks like this and out of that you get these little fiddleheads which turn into the diploid phase. The haploid phase, or the gametophyte, is a very short segment of the life cycle of this plant. It normally spends its time in the sporophyte phase. We're going to look at the gymnosperms now, and we're going to start out the gymnosperm by looking at a pine tree. This is a typical example of a pine tree. The pine tree is diploid, and being diploid, it is the result of the seed germinating. At some time during its life cycle, it is going to produce gametes. This is the male gamete cone of a pine tree. This is the female gamete cone of a pine tree. The male gamete passes the pollen onto the female gamete that fertilizes the egg. Out of that, you get a fertilized cone. The fertilized cone is diploid in nature. Here we have a mature pine cone. Inside of the mature pine cone, you find the seeds. The seeds are either released as the pine cone matures or some pine cones actually require fire to burn them in order to be able to allow the seed out. We often find squirrels chew the seeds up. The seed then begins the life cycle again as the seed germinates and it forms these itty bitty little pine trees and out of these itty bitty little pine trees we get these great big pine trees. This spends most of its time in the sporophyte phase. The sporophyte is that which we see all the time. The gametophyte, how long does this last? You've all parked your car under a tree in beginning of the springtime and it comes out yellow. That is due to pine pollen and other pollens. That phase normally lasts a month or two. Age of the tree? Oh, this tree here is at least 20 years old. I planted it and I watched it grow for a 20 year time period. How long will it last? Some of these trees last hundreds of years. We can see that in the sporophyte phase, it can last a much longer time. In the gametophyte phase, it's going to last a month or two. Angiosperms. Angiosperms are flowering plants. This example happens to be with a cactus. How old does a cactus like that live? This one looked like it was quite old. They can stay around for a long period of time. The cactus produces flowers out of flower buds. You see the flower buds here. The flower buds open up. These are the gametophyte parts. This is going to produce the gametes on the inside of this cactus flower, which is very pretty. What you see is the female part in the dead center. And around the outside, you've got all the anthers that are producing the pollen. That's the haploid phase. The pollen is transferred over and you get fertilization. Then you start to get fruit formation. And fruit formation at this point, again, is diploid. How long does it go through the diploid phase? Years. How long does it take to go through the haploid phase? Each flower is a couple of weeks, tops, whereas the plant may be doing that all summer long, but each flower is just a couple of weeks. In the end, you can see the fruit increasing in size and growing, and eventually you can open it up and on the inside. These are actually edible and they're quite tasty. They're eaten in a lot of different areas of the world. The only thing you have to make sure is that you get it well peeled. So you can see the difference between the sporophytes and the gametophytes. The gametophytes produce the gametes. With the exception of the non-vascular plants, the sporophyte is the dominant phase, and the gametophyte is very quick. With the non-vascular plants, the gametophyte is the dominant phase, and the sporophyte is quick.